coming up on Push to Talk. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order details. Mark Cerny reveals the first glimpse into the PS5. Assassin's Creed Unity gets a resurrection. Jan takes his first plunge into Hyrule with Breath of the Wild later this month. And finally, our favorite game soundtracks. All that and more on today's show. This is Push to Talk, episode 20, recorded on Friday, April 19th, 2019. This episode is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash pushtotalk and browse the unmatched selection of audio programs. Then just download a title for free and start listening. We'll have a recommendation for you later on in the show. But for now, let's get things going. I'm your host, Jan, and alongside me, as always, is Bill and Joe. Hey, Bill, how is your week so far? Uh, you know, my week was all right. Um, I don't remember most of it. Wasn't drunk, but just don't remember it. Leafs won. Uh, that was like, what, half hour ago? So that's we're just going to ride on that. We're good. We'll see where we're at in an hour. Yeah, we're recording on Friday evening, and it was a little bit up in the air because I think that game between the Leafs and the Bruins went scoreless until midway through the third or something like that yeah it was about eight minutes left in the third and i was getting worried for you guys because it was just not happening like i was i was glued there until that was over um so yeah it was a little sketchy but uh we scored because they uh they like push the talk there, we, there you go that's good good to know and uh welcome back joe how's your week been i hear you've been on vacation i was on vacation and unlike bill i was a little drunk <laughs> and uh no i wasn't i wasn't and i should have been because i was on vacation but was it was it good. still worthwhile though not yeah i going mean to work yeah i mean yes and no coming back from vacation is always challenging because you're playing catch up so i hate that part mm. of it but that's life were you is at least that... able to keep up on some of the news because there has been a fair bit of news early in this past week i from a hotel room watched inside xbox hosted by uh major nelson <laughs> and my wife was you know on looking as i hogged the hotel television she was like who is this doofus i was like <laughs> tell me about it <laughs> i mean good guy i'm sure but uh the face of xbox it's uh there's something tonally off there in my opinion well he's been around doing this forever now i think he's almost become synonymous with xbox like he has if know? you've been paying attention right do we know what, what, what's up with the gloves? And I'm not trying to take a shot at the guy. I'm just genuinely curious. He, he was wearing, like, white gloves the whole time. Was that he a, was wearing gloves and I didn't notice? Yeah, he was wearing uh, white gloves, and I don't know if maybe it's something where he's concerned about germs or whether it's something I missed, like, with entertainment value. I have no idea. But he was wearing gloves, like, basically the entire time. Really? And it yeah. wouldn't have been, like, a cuphead Oh, yeah, tribute. you know, it could have been. Yeah, there, that's there what you it go. is. I'm there just looking up his, he actually tweeted, um, or oh, this was last year. So he's done this before. Yeah, but that's, that, that still makes using sense. using that and, too. Uh, okay. I'm glad it's an entertainment thing because I wouldn't, I wouldn't want someone to, I mean, we should probably all be wearing gloves and masks all the time, but, you know, <laughs> nobody wants to go first. Yeah, yeah. Apologies for throwing shade at uh, Major Nelson. Just the guy in the in the blazer just didn't scream Xbox to my unknowing wife that's all gotcha well that's just a, it's just an outside perception of what gamers should look like or something <laughs> yeah right he's know. successful he's got a job just like us so um moving into the top stories of the early this past week like we talked last episode a little bit about the star wars uh, jedi fallen order reveal that would be coming up just uh, like half a day after we recorded the last episode so naturally that happened last saturday at the uh, star wars celebration in chicago and um joe you uh you you had a lot of interest in this did you i, I know well, i'm gonna call you out i know you just watched the trailer just now but <laughs> your vacation isn't is a good excuse it was um Having seen it, what are your initial thoughts? Well, so the, what I mentioned last week is that I anticipated no gameplay, right? And we didn't get any. And uh, because of that, I can't say that my, you know, my hype is through the roof. I'm not a trailer guy. 
be it movies, whatever, to television shows. I don't watch trailers. It's not it's not a high and mighty thing. I just either they spoil something for me or they just simply don't, in my opinion, represent like the product. So especially for games, that's how I feel. Like the trailer just doesn't seem attached in any way to the product. Um, so it didn't do anything for me, right? That being said, everything I said last week holds where I love that Respawn is in control of this thing. And I feel really mm-hmm. good about them uh, being responsible for it. Yeah, and especially EA and trailers. Like You have to give them credit. They've, in the past, uh, made amazing-looking trailers. Whether or not the resulting game really held up to that is a different conversation. But there's no doubt that EA's trailers in general are st- stunning looking and this one was really no different i think they yeah. they mentioned that it wasn't gameplay footage like you said but it was rendered in engine mm-hmm. which by the way i initially thought like oh gotta be frostbite right we had the whole bioware issue with frostbite and um uh, anthem so it was kind of a surprise to me that this wasn't uh frostbite it's actually the unreal engine well good and uh that brings me to my next question i don't believe respawn uses them in general uses uh, frostbite in general no they didn't use it on titanfall that's for sure right or apex um so it was just kind of it's interesting because you you said that you know respawn seems to be a little bit more independent working on this than perhaps other studios under the ea umbrella are um they 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 kind of they hinted at a couple other things you know made very clear it is a single player only game Mm -hmm. no multiplayer no microtransactions again two things that rightfully or wrongfully ea has been getting a lot of a sort of a reputation for you know obviously apex legends is it's it's free but it is microtransactions and online so this is like the polar opposite right and it was very much um delivered the way playstation delivered the ps4 announcement which is to say like look what's happening to xbox right now we are going to tout that this has an optical drive it's uh you know we're not killing the used games market. It's uh, it's not like an always online device, right? Like they they looked at the at the scenery and said, "We are going to capitalize on the uh, the Reddit, <laughs> the the Reddit environment." And I feel like that's kind of how this announcement came out. Where and it's funny, it's almost incestuous because they're looking at what happened to their sister studio over at Bioware, and they're saying like, "We are not going to let that happen to us." This yeah. is going to be single player. It is going to be narrative driven. It is going to be, uh, all, you know, all the things we already said, and and it just it was very deliberate in how they delivered that. And and they've really branded it as a, you know, they talked a lot about the story, of course, it being really revealed at Star Wars Celebration, not really a gaming convention, per se. Uh, so they focused a lot on the story and when it takes place, and it's after uh, Order sixty six when basically all the Jedi were supposed to be eliminated and you know the, the main character that you play as is uh, a jedi or a force sensitive person mm-hmm. and um so you get to sort of do the whole like you know you're being persecuted hunted whatever and have to come to grips with your force powers and they've branded it as a melee game more than a shooter yeah. um i think i don't know if you noticed but there was very little actual like weapon play in the trailer it was all sure focused on lightsabers and melee stuff and they used the term thoughtful combat now we talked about uh the dark souls games recently and i know there's been some comparisons drawn in rumors in the past about jedi fallen order being similar to that in its melee kind of combat style uh does that excite you because you i mean you obviously like the dark souls kind of series (laughs) yeah there's some some strong thematic bonds between our first couple episodes here um it's nice actually yeah 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 so go back and listen to episode 18 buds um so i do like hearing that right but my gut reaction if i think about it for even a second is you can't be slow and deliberate and a jedi it's not really it doesn't really really work like that so on paper i like the sound of it being sort of a methodical melee experience i just don't know how that would actually play out is that fair to say? I thought yeah. of The Witcher 3 when they talked about it. Because I feel that's... And I, listen, I'm, I'm not the kind of person that has a ton of... Uh, I don't play a lot of games. We've discussed that. I play a lot of the games over and over again. But The Witcher 3 for me really felt like something that I thought about. Like, you know, I know every move that I make in that game, I know what I'm doing. Now, I think, obviously, 
uh, with a Star Wars game that's melee focused, you probably need to speed it up more than The Witcher 3, but that was sort of, I was like, huh, I wonder if it'll be kind of like that, like there will be a base, like a core amount of moves that you can do, and it's really about stringing them together and mastering them. Um, maybe not necessarily as punishing as something like Souls, but... Mm-hmm. No, and they touched Deliberate. on that too, right? They said like this is this is a very wide audience that they need to appease, um, so it can't be like Sekiro. Thank God. Um, yeah. You know. No, you couldn't do that with Star Wars, right? No. The, the audience is way too large. You would alienate way too many people. Sure. But what I hope for is that when they say thoughtful combat, I hope it's more of the one-on-one uh, encounters. So I guess similar to. Uh, the Witcher 3, for example, where, yeah, maybe the actual fighting is a little bit more snappy and quicker, but the fights themselves are not big brawls. Uh, like, if if I compare it to um, Shadow of War, is that yeah. what it was called? Yeah. I think it was, uh, right? Yeah, that's a good comparison. Uh, which I thought had actually excellent melee combat, but you were usually fighting fighting groups of enemies, lots of groups, and you were jumping from one to the other, and you're doing your moves, and you're kicking everybody's ass at the same time, which is fun, maybe not as jedi like as they envision sure especially because like i would hope that they maintain the fact that if you get struck with the lightsaber and you're a stormtrooper like it's over it's not like it's not like six hits (laughs) the way you know batman arkham men and shadow of war are it could be um you could also think maybe about like something like god of war because you could button mash in that and have be effective to a point and uh on did. certain difficulty levels, but when you got to some of the bigger fights and when you got to some of the, uh, especially the Valkyries, it was very much about timing and learning um, the moves and whatnot and understanding it. And it was so that I felt like God of War rewarded people for being thoughtful, but also made it a little bit like it was accessible to people who were just in there to, you know, swing an axe. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, that's very true, actually. There's there's quite a few games that they can draw inspiration from, I think. That hopefully, like, you know, they, we did, again, we didn't see too much of that. Uh, we had speculated in the last episode as to what we would see. We did get a release date, which I didn't anticipate. Yeah. Um, and it's this year, so it'll be November 15th this year. Yep. So that's exciting. Isn't that when the movie's coming out or about then? The movie's coming out at Christmas, and I think... Joe, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the past few Christmas Star Wars movies have been early, middle December? Yeah, I think early December, yep. Yeah. So I suspect wow. the game will actually come out a little bit before the movie. And and they're completely, I mean, yeah, they're the same universe, it's Star Wars, but even timeline-wise, completely in different areas. Right. Yeah. No. I mean, I think I predicted that we would get the year, um, so I guess I'm right, but... <laughs> <laughs> I could have been more right. <laughs> Fine, Bill, you win. Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm pleased with tempered excitement. That's that's where I'm at. Can I I wanted to circle back for one second, not to draw it out, but you said you don't really get hyped for trailers for games, right? Yeah, I personally how, don't. How do you get hyped for a game? Uh gameplay trailers, buddy. I mean, oh, okay. So I got okay, no, no, I get you. So it, it can be a trailer, but it's got to show you gameplay, like not like anybody can put together, you know, a cinematic trailer. Yeah, you know what though? To be fair, like I'll say that I am someone that like reads previews, and I like to like read the text, so I don't have any sort of like imagery spoiling my future experience. Supporting the journalists out there, good for you. <laughs> I do like to read. Isn't that weird? Um, I mean, I write, and I don't like to read. Yeah. I like to read yeah, your stuff, just an Bill. Enigma, Bill. Yeah, I know. I was going to say, like, I really like a preview that... I like an enthusiastic preview of, like... I love when Game of Game Informer does their cover story and they do, like, a deep dive on a game that's going to come out, right? Um, yeah. Not only because they, like, really labor on it, right? But they tend to be, like, a positive group. In general, those, those folks over there are just, like, really upbeat. And I... When they're, like, stoked on something, I, I find that infectious, so... That's usually like that's usually the engine to get me hyped. Okay, that makes sense. I'll allow it. Thank you. And you, I would assume you probably get a little bit more of an unbiased view as well from previews or even gameplay trailers. Like it's a little bit more difficult to hide things, you know, reveal trailers and uh, you know cinematic trailers. They're often obviously tailored to look really cool and look spectacular, and they do. They always do. Yeah. Um, 
wasn't the Anthem E3 trailer from 2017 gameplay, and then it turned out to not have anything of like at all. Yeah, but that. see, that's a I mean, good that's example, a, man. That's a good example. That's a bit of an example, but that's a good example of. To me, I'm watching that, and I feel like this doesn't feel genuine. You know, I, I right. don't know exactly how to articulate that, but I assume that you guys know what I mean. Where it just it feels like produced, right? Whether it's yeah. like the HUD missing, which I never like. It's like I don't need you to hide the hood, right? We're not like dainty drinking tea here. Put the hood on. I want to see what's going on. I want you to hide the HUD as long as I can hide the HUD. I mean, but if you hide fair the enough. HUD and I can't hide the HUD, now we got a problem. That's that's fair. The point being, um, like, I don't like the hiding of the HUD for the cinematic yeah. impact because the whole point, as I'm trying to get a like an idea of of what the game is representative of. Right. I get well, you. And I think both have their place. I think a cinematic trailer has to has its place and a Absolutely. gameplay trailer has its place. They just serve different purposes. Absolutely. Listen, I I make websites for a living that market video games and as someone who's constantly requesting assets from clients, the best thing they can do for me is say, "Here's our slick trailer. Embed this mm-hmm. on the page somewhere and here's a bunch of art to it." Like I'm all for that. I'm I'm about it. You need it. I'm just saying in terms of me getting into that um, from like a consumer standpoint, it's just, it's not, it's not the thing that tips me over. That's all. The thing that tips me over is, is history. Like if, it, if like when the last of us two comes out, guarantee slam dunk pre-order for me. So like right? a sequel, you're saying like a great sequel is what you're looking Or for. just a, or just a studio that gets it right. Gotcha. Like yeah, track th- right. that's where respawn is coming in right now. Like the Titanfall series, I've been impressed with the entire time. Apex Legends, you know what? Like, great job. So that's three for three, and I'm like, okay. I mean, I'm I'm buying in on your on your Star Wars title right away, just because like you've you've earned that, and that's kind of where I come from. Is if a studio fools me a couple times, then that's when I'm out. No matter what happens, I'll wait and see. But mm-hmm. if you earn my loyalty, then I will give it to you. Yeah, fair. All right. I think that is fair. Uh, so we're looking forward to November 15th. Now, Bill, what was your top story that was also announced very early on this past week? Uh, mine was the PlayStation 5. And, um, I mean, I'm you know me. I like my, uh, my PlayStation uh, exclusive titles. I think they do a great job with them. So in that sense, I guess I'm a PlayStation uh, fan more than an Xbox fan. Um, not that I don't like both, but I like the experiences PlayStation offers. And... The PS5 is something I've been kind of waiting for information on and news on for a while, so it, it definitely uh, it definitely crossed my radar this week when I saw it. But something in particular is what I want to focus on. I started looking up some of the um, the details of like what it's going to include, mm-hmm. and the one thing I can't let go of is people having a freak out over an SSD. Like in which way? Positive? Like overly hyped? Or I have two. Like, <laughs> and I've had them for years what like it just bothers me that we have this group of people and i'm about to be a pc elitist yes here. you are yes i am <laughs> Joe, joe's prepared it bothers me that we have a group of people who are so in the dark about modern technology that we can sell them things that have been around for years and they're like whoa man that's gonna be amazing like come on it's an ssd hang like, on hang on hang on hang on, hang on. here listen the reason people prefer consoles is not because there's some sort of tech incentive, right? As you're alluding to. That's not why I'm into consoles. It's because after working, I want to be on my couch with a controller that is going to sync instantly. There's no you know, drivers to install. I'm in the family room. It's that aspect of it. No one's there for the tech. Then why incentive. do they market the other aspect of it? Because they're marketing it as in, like, look at all this amazing technology. So you're saying right. that the reason you want to use it is completely the opposite of what they're trying to no, sell no, it no, based no. on. Because then the follow-up to what I was saying is that they're saying, this is what Xbox doesn't do. right? So, and also, this is why it's better than the PS4, and you should spend more yes. money to buy a new one. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not giving a pass on it. I don't, I, I'm not convinced. <laughs> I think it's fair. So, I mean, obviously, the SSD is one of the one of Sony's selling points in the new PS5. Uh, they say it's a, a custom SSD, whatever that means. To to your point, Bill, SSDs for PC gamers have been sort of a requirement for a couple of years now, with prices coming down and down and down. Especially recently, I think I have five in my PC now, just because I can't pass up a good deal. Um, so, 
you know, you know that's that's one piece. But as we know, as PC gamers, when you make a switch from a, a spinning disk drive to an SSD, it's probably the biggest performance boost you can have. So right. the, honestly, the fact that the PS4 Pro didn't come with an SSD was kind of mind boggling. Obviously, we never talked about that when that was announced. But you know, for all intents and purposes, they probably could have spend an extra 25 bucks and sped up the ps4 pro even more but right. yeah i just i and, and just to be clear you can put an ssd in a playstation now it just yes. doesn't come with one so yeah. basically you are going to we're going to ship you a playstation 5 with a hard drive similar to the one that you can put in your playstation 4 right now yeah and but but to joe's point it. for for most console gamers that do just want to plug it into their tv put it there plop on the couch after work and not really think about it right I yeah. mean, Joe, you turn it on, you play your game. That's it. It's just it just does the thing it's supposed to do. Right. So and that's why them, it annoys me. Great. Yeah. That, but well, that's why it annoys me because they are they know that they're selling to a group of people that don't understand what you're advertising. They're selling like they're they're, they're listing off all this stuff that's supposed to be impressive, but it's not. And then the group of people who are playing because they don't care about that kind of stuff just hear words like ssd and 8k and go wow that's going to be amazing i need to have that without really knowing what any of that means yeah. or how that plays out so, so that that's it's not necessarily my annoyance it's just i don't like the entire climate of that um if i was in, if i was a sony exec i would do exactly the same thing i just don't like it well what do you think joe like you're a you play PS4 games, do you? I'm I'm a historian, and I'm sure this will become evident as we continue <laughs> the podcast. But I I collect it all. I like okay. my library. I play it all. So, um, and and we should point out, and you're out of the three of us, you're the one that legitimately does not play PC games. Yeah, but so it's it's not he, it's not a uh, a front. I'm not opposed to it. No, no, yeah, no. But so the PS5 might arguably be more marketed at you than Bill and I. Perhaps. Yeah, I mean, I know because I know exactly what all those specs mean, right? Which I suppose is a little more uncommon for a piece, for a console gamer, right? Like the the bulleted list of the components aren't a mystery to me, right? Um, but I agree with Bill that it's probably uh, the announcement was probably meant to be sort of like mystical in all the you know 8K, right? Like it's it is bullshit. I mean. Well, and I mean, yeah, I was going to mention the 8K thing. I mean, 4K, sure, uh, but 8K seems like there are literally, like, nobody has an 8K TV. No, and like, that's how, just not a thing. <laughs> how fine of a pixel do you need in your gaming experience? I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's one of those things that's like, you don't know how nice it is until you see it, I guess, but like, yeah. It On the other like hand, what that deal. what that tells me is that if it will support up to 8K, maybe they can do 4K at 60 FPS a little bit more commonly. Right. Than they can't they do, do 1080p at 60 FPS reliably on a PlayStation 4 Pro, so we'll see. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, Bill's right. Like, no, let's, yeah, you are. We're, we're, jump, we're literally jumping the 2 and 4K markets at this point. <laughs> like, give gamers... As, okay, and on a large TV, look, the larger the screen for me, the better it looks. Because you're usually a large screen, you're further away, and it, it actually does look better. If I were to hook my PlayStation up right now to my 4K TV, it, even though, like, I get it, yes, it's 4K, but the fact that you're playing on a, on a screen, it looks better. If I watch a Twitch stream on my monitor, which is 27 inches, versus downstairs on a 70-inch television, it looks 10 times better on the 70-inch because I'm further away. I think that that when they talk about things like 8K, um, I don't think they need to even bother with that. Like, I would be happy with them to settle on 2K, but nobody talks about well, 2K, so it doesn't have the same marketing value. To be to be fair, there's no 2K is not a thing with TVs, really. Fair and enough, but they could just stay at four. But then they're not offering they could, anything they're new, not, and you that's don't buy right. it. You have to add new stuff. And speaking of more new stuff, they mentioned 3D audio, which I don't want to talk about. Whatever that means, um, but. <laughs> They're adding ray tracing, which of course was uh, Nvidia's big thing on the RTX video card line, which costs like three times as much as a PS5. But I guess the new AMD Ryzen CPU and AMD uh, Navi GPUs will feature this. And again, Sony's got like some custom deal with AMD, so it's not just an off-the-shelf thing, supposedly. But it will support it's... ray tracing. And and again, I guess it all comes down to is games are supposed to run smoother, look better, 
right? Okay, yeah, no, nah, no. A lot of this comes down to, first of all, we have to say I guess a lot because we don't know and nobody does except, you know, the people building it. Um, so there's always a lot of guesswork and we'll see how it works out. Secondly, I can't wait for PlayStation 5s to start exploding. That's going to be fun. <laughs> um, and it, it's never the case. Like, you're going to get... Like, think about what, I'm, what you're playing on PS4. Like, God of War was heating homes, right? Like, that's... Yeah. It, that's going to happen again. So when they talk about it running smoother and how everything's going to run a little better and a little bit more efficient, no, it's not. Only until they figure out how to pull more from it. And then it's just going to be the same. It's just console. It's the same thing every five years. And that's cool. But let's just not pretend it's something it's not. Yeah. No, you're, that's definitely It should true. still be a reasonable... I don't. I can't believe I'm defending consoles for some reason. I don't know what's happened here. But um, it, it should be a reasonable upgrade over a ps4 because the ps4 pro wasn't really much of one and it has been how long has it been since the ps4 has been out a 2013 long, years. forever in terms of technology right yeah so all these things should make the thing whether it's faster cooler quieter smoother whatever should be should be better and i know we're we're talking about a lot of shoulds and what ifs and so on and so forth but the one thing we do know for sure is that it will be backwards compatible with uh, ps4 yes. games See, that's like mm. that's the one thing that's assuming that that's not a lie, right? And let's just pretend that that one's not a gray area, like everything else we talked about, and say like, okay, he confirmed backwards compat compatibility. Mm. That is amazing. Even uh, if it's a digital, I mean, first of all, like most of my PS4 games are digital, so even if it's just a digital download thing, you know, Xbox did that years ago with the Xbox One and Xbox 360 games, but. That is great, because for me, it means that I'm going to buy the PS5, because that's what I do, but it means I can get rid of the PS4 Pro, mm -hmm. and at least abide with my self-imposed policy of one new thing, one old thing out. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good policy. I didn't know you had that policy. Yeah, I, I'm not good at following it, but I try. So, right. I like to have, like I said, I like to collect everything, right? But right. I, not from a clutter perspective. I like to have games from Kingdom Come until present. But I want as few consoles as possible that can play them, right? So that's I love I love hearing that. Yeah. I uh, the last thing I'll say about the PlayStation Five is that after all this kicking and screaming, I'll buy it on day one. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, we all know that. <clears throat> I just I just 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 tell me. Just be like, we 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 have a PlayStation Five. It's gonna do stuff. It'll be pretty. Still gonna run like a jet engine. You gonna buy one? Yep. All right. Cool. Well, and That's, rumors are that it probably won't come out until the end of next year, um, but that hasn't been announced one way or the other. Yeah. So That's I fine. assume we'll, we'll find see. out more at, I was going to say E3, but not really, but like at, at one of Sony's, you know, uh, state of play events that they're going to hold throughout yeah, the year. Maybe PSX At some point, they'll give us more details as it always goes. Uh, what I found interesting, though, is that Sony came out with this really before Microsoft did anything, which... I'm a big believer that Microsoft is treading water and they're really, they're, they're trying, but just like, I don't know. I mean, I have an Xbox One, but, you know, and uh, sort of related to that, Microsoft's other announcement this past week was an Xbox One S all digital edition, which is basically just the Xbox One S without the DVD drive for 50 bucks less. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, Meh. That thing that I was into until you explained one detail and I was like, oh, okay, never mind. I'm not into that. <laughs> and that was, it's the S, not the X. Yeah, yeah. So I was and out right away. That one I bought, and side note, little story, I bought that one so I could watch Blu-ray um, discs, movies, of which I own a total of two. <laughs> and the thing, if it hasn't been rebooted just prior to watching, it will lag like crazy. So, again, you know, that probably wasn't a great experience. But. That is the most yawn thing ever, is... That you bought an Xbox One. Did you say S or X? S. S. Yeah, for Blu-ray movies one. and own two. Oh, <laughs> well, it's all better now. <laughs> yeah, I think right. I, I think I own Star Wars on Blu-ray, but I haven't watched it yet. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, um, my top story this past week is going to be just a, a brief one, but obviously, uh, what it was Tuesday or Wednesday that devastating fire that um, destroyed part of the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Uh, was all over the news, and um, following that, Ubisoft has made Assassin's Creed Unity free for a couple days on PC, uh, because it's set in that time period and in the region, and it has a apparently a very lifelike representation of the Notre Dame Cathedral in the game. And what I found interesting about that is, 
A, good for Ubisoft for making the game available free. They've also donated, I believe, 500,000 euros towards its restoration. Um, but what was interesting is that people have been jumping on this so much that Ubisoft had to, A, increase server capacity for a five-year-old game, which is quite amazing. Even Yes, it's free, but still, there's free games every other day now. Um, and we all, we're all familiar with uh, review bombing, the practice where gamers who are upset about one thing or another go into Steam or whatever and leave negative reviews about the game because they're trying to drive home some sort of uh, point to the publisher or the developer. Uh, in this case, the game is being reverse review bombed with tons of positive reviews coming into the game, mostly praising Ubisoft for that accurate representation of Notre Dame, which I thought was, you know, I thought it was interesting. I thought it was funny. Um, and it made me smile today. <laughs> I played that game for work um, just back when I was at the end of my Prima Games run and just before my US Gamer run. And it's actually what that game is what got me into US Gamer in the first place. Uh, so, one, I don't know how accurate it is, but I remember climbing all over that building in Unity and being like, wow. Like, mm -hmm. it was really cool. Uh, I absolutely loved it, um, and it was neat, and I love the way they do that with uh, a lot of Assassin's Creed games is show off his historical locations. Yeah. And two, um, and I just forgot that point, uh, one of, I think the most popular article I've ever written was from that game, which was uh, the Nostradamus Enigma puzzles. Mm, I remember that. Those two things. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I, I, I never finished cool. that game. I remember it mostly for its creepy face glitches that they had to yeah. contend with initially, um, which were just bizarre and, and amusing. But um, what I also thought was funny is that uh, several articles were written early on after the fire saying, you know, like, maybe they can use Assassin's Creed Unity as a blueprint when they rebuild Notre Dame. And, of course, that's nonsense no matter how yeah. good that representation is. Fortunately, though, I think it was just laser mapped like a couple of years ago, so they actually have real, proper, you know, schematics of what the, the cathedral looked like. So, anyways, that was my feel-good story for this past week. Rare, very rare. Yes. Now, a quick mention of our sponsor, as you heard earlier in the show, we're sponsored by Audible. You can get a free audiobook if you go to visit audibletrial.com slash pushtotalk. And I wanted to recommend a book this week to give credit or to call to attention, as if anybody doesn't know, but Game of Thrones came back last week, and it's in its final season now. There'll be another episode before you hear our episode here. And if you've never read the books by George R.R. R. Martin that the TV show is based on, Audible has all of the Game of Thrones series books, or really the um, A Story of Ice and Fire uh, on audible.com and they're really really great like I listened to them before I started watching the show many years ago but even if you've watched the show it's never too late, late to check those out and you can find them if you go to audibletrial.com slash push to talk you'll get a free audio book with a 30 day membership trial nice. alright moving on game time what did you guys play last week Um, why don't we start with you, Joe? What did you play? Did you get time during your vacation to play some games? Uh, yeah, I did. So, three games, quickly. I mentioned last week I played World of Final Fantasy with, with a, I suppose, a tepid reaction to it. Um, due to the downtime, I put some, a few more hours into it. It grew on me a little bit. Um, the dialogue is still, I mean, you may as well, like, hit me in the head with a baseball bat. It's that bad. But, um... <laughs> It's got that sort of addictive grinding JRPG thing that you may be familiar with with other games. So, um, yeah, I'm at like a 6.57 with it right now. Um, I also briefly touched on Katana Zero. It is a new action platformer from Devolver. Um, it really just came out, didn't it? Yeah, yesterday, the 18th. And I only put like 30 minutes into it, so I don't want to like you know, give a too much of a hot take, but I mean, it looks really good. The art is outstanding. Um, the premise is cool. The action seems, um, fair, right? Like it seems like pretty responsive to your control. So all the things that like matter, um, at a high level are there. So I'll put some more time in this week and I guess 
let you know what I think next week. And then the last thing I uh, want to touch on is, I think I mentioned you guys, or Jan, I said the name Celeste, right? Which is uh, yeah, Matt Makes Games um, platformer that released in January last year. And it like received tons of um, Game of the Year accolades at the end of 2018. And it was mm-hmm. a day one thing for me. Like, I don't know why. Like, I have it wasn't based on Towerfall, which he made previously. Like, I hadn't played that. I don't know why. I was just, I saw it. I was like, that looks awesome. And I wound up like really feeling that way. And it's like one of my favorite games ever. Um, yeah, yeah, it's one of those games that uh, Bill and I will hear about when it's time for, you know, the uh, the annual game awards or something like that. And we're like, man, wish we had more time for games like that. Well, here's the good news, Jan and Bill. Um, my first playthrough took me 20 hours and I like went for all the side stuff and, you know, all the all the superfluous content that they offer i did and on my second playthrough on a plane on the way to arizona um i began and finished it and new jersey to arizona is only four some odd hours right so uh you do have time to play this amazing gem is what i'm saying (laughs) he's he's letting us off the hook we have the time um it's more i don't know there's something we have a hard time and maybe it's more me but I have a hard time pulling the trigger on unknowns when it comes to games. See, I do like to be in my zone. each other, Bill. Zone. I'm telling you, this thing is outstanding. I you can play it, it in five hours. Yeah, go play it five hours. I'm telling Dude, you, it's I've, outstanding. Oh, like, as soon as people say, this game is amazing, I go buy it, and then it just sits there. All right. You, you played it on I the got, Switch, yeah? I did. But, mm-hmm. I mean, if you're an Xbox Live Gold subscriber, you might have it for free. Um, for the listeners out there, it was free a couple months ago. I mean, if you don't own it, it's 20 bucks and it's on sale sometimes. So, like, it's a very low barrier to entry. It's so good. The music is unbelievably good. Um, the message is outstanding. It's, like, about, you know, positive mental health. I love it. I encourage it. Do it. Well, I think Bill is onto something um, about us having a hard time getting started on sort of unknown, not unknown, unknown to us or unfamiliar to us games. Um, and I thought about this earlier, actually, as I was preparing for the show, because I thought about what I played this past week. And I, I had told myself at the beginning of the week, I looked at, you know, games releasing this week, and Anno 1800 was one of them. And I, I'm very excited about it. Uh, I used to play the previous games in the series and quite enjoyed them. And I was looking for a change of pace from The Division 2. And I had pre ordered it months ago. And so I was stoked to get started on Tuesday evening. And I have played it, but I haven't played it as much as I've played Destiny 2 this week. And I was going to make an analogy to good food versus junk food and how I keep falling back into Destiny 2, which is like my McDonald's cheeseburger that I really shouldn't eat. But it's just, it's so easy sometimes yeah. and satisfying, even though it makes me angry a lot of times. Um, you know, so I haven't played as much of Anno 1800 as I wanted to, maybe. But And I know, Bill, you played Destiny 2 this week as well. Yeah, but I mean, I'm still um, I'm still in a recovery program that's working well for me, which is to... Well, you could throw that off, though, and you kind of started to have to do that, but um, I've just been pacing myself and just, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. As soon as I'm annoyed, I'm getting out of it. So I've been, I've been fine, and uh, I actually... Um, I actually did manage to pull a Joe and try a new game this week. Wow. I did. I did. Um, I played a game called Unheard from uh, Next Studios. It's like a detective game where it, it's... Did you remember the movie Deja Vu with Denzel Washington? No. Okay, well... <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, so basically the idea of the movie is that there's this technology that allows them to wear a headset where they can go back and watch um, watch live events. Like, watch something happen. So let's say a crime... And in, in the movie, the premise is there's a terrorist attack, and they're able to go back and, like, watch and try to find who did it um, because they, they they know certain things about the attack, and then obviously they go back and focus on those things, and then they uncover the truth. So this is kind of like that, um, except instead of being visual, it's based on audio. So you are, I mean, kind of a detective who uh, basically uses an iPad and goes back, and you get a top-down view in this game of a map and little circles that are the characters, and you don't have... You see a list of names on the right side, and those are all the people there, but you don't know who is who, and you have to listen to the conversations and figure out who is who, 
I'd figure out who did what. Um, and uh, like label each character and you can rewind and fast forward the uh, the timeline as many times as you want. There's no drawback to it. Um, very cool concept. Some of the uh, scenarios are neat and I did find myself kind of getting engaged with those, but ultimately it, for me, it had too few scenarios and uh, um, yeah, it was just, it was okay. Um, better than average, not great. So well, I'm sorry. But well, that was me. I tried something new. Yeah, that's the stuff. And I, I just I just realized that uh, Celeste is made by two Canadian developers, so I guess that means I have to get it now. Yeah, that that's and oddly enough, that's what will make you play it. I know you and, well. And enough. I was just checking to see just in case I might already own it on PS4 because you mentioned it was part of Xbox One Game Pass um, or Xbox Xbox One Gold or whatever. Yeah, um, doesn't look like it was part of PlayStation Plus because I usually go pick those up. So. Yeah, I don't think it I was I'm, on PlayStation. Yeah. Sometimes I own games and don't realize it, so I had to double check. Is this a controller or a mouse and keyboard game? Uh, like, I know it could be both, but... Well, it's something that... What do they call it when the D-pad movement is eight ways instead of four ways? Right, like the diagonals count, too. There's a name mm. for that? I, I don't know. I, I've heard names for it, but like the diagonals matter, so like the analog stick isn't the best way you're better off with the d-pad or arrow keys i think gotcha but i'm terrible with the mouse and keyboard so i'll probably go d-pad i mean sure yeah i mean i definitely played with the d-pad and it was all good i heard it's very hard too i mean it's hard but it's hard in the best way where it's like oh you screwed up here's you know the best checkpoint you could imagine you know well i might give Mm. it a try i i'm i'm committed to playing lots more Anno 1800 over this long weekend. We'll see how that turns out, and I'll give you guys an update next episode. Nice. But um, I want to do that. I've done my Destiny 2 stuff for now. They, they have this spring event, uh, Verdant Forest, whatever. It's grenade spam time in Destiny 2, and I was taking advantage of some of that. But, uh, yes, more variety. And I think Joe will actually be a good influence for us. He's going to keep telling us about new things that we should yeah. try every week. And just to put a bow on yeah. it, I think... To use your analogy against you, um, I think as a nation <laughs> or a continent, we could all <laughs> eat better. And so let's apply the same logic to our game diet, right? A, a uh, well-balanced game diet makes for a better, well-adjusted, healthier gamer. Something like that. <laughs> There's a thing in there somewhere that can <laughs> somewhere. be branded into something. Yeah. But you are right. Okay, let's talk about our push to talk, hashtag push to talk segment. Last week we asked people to chime in on what they considered their best battle music. Um, and we got a few responses on, on Twitter. We had some suggestions from people that uh, pointed out things such as the uh, Mass Effect series. Uh, Zippo pointed that out. Also Battlefield 3 and 4. Actually, he, he added like a bunch of games. Zippo, you got to choose one. He did say it's hard to pinpoint one in particular because there's lots of games with good music. And I would say that that is very true. I feel like Overall, the quality of game scores in recent years has really gone up another level, hasn't it? Yeah. So uh, Red Dead 2 was mentioned as well by Jake, which I would have to agree with. Red Dead 2 had amazing music throughout. Not so much battle-focused, I think, but like just mood-setting, atmospheric music. Really well done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say Red Dead 2. uh, I don't know if it was battle, but yeah, for sure. It had good music. I actually, I usually turn music off in games too, so it's a hard one for me. Yeah, you do that. It's weird. It's one of <laughs> well, those weird things you do. I need to hear the bullet going past yeah. my ear. I do that <laughs> in in competitive games. Rocket League, no music. Um, Destiny, I didn't do music. Halo, no music in in uh, multiplayer. Distracting. Yeah, I've got the music off in Destiny right now, but I've had it on often enough to to know that that's my pick. But I'll toss that out there and say that that's because I don't listen to a lot of music, so I'm kind of picking the one I remember instead of the best one. Well, and Destiny 2 does have a pretty good variety of quote-unquote battle music, because they tend to have different music for each of the strikes, and I think that's where you can most, you know, get the best feeling for what you would consider battle music in certain scenes, and they've definitely had some really good choices in, in certain strikes. Some other ones, not so much, but... Yeah, it's got to be high intensity for me to like it. Like, it can't be anything weak or, you know, just uh, uh, I, I, deep bagpipes, 
drums, that kind of stuff, ideally, and I'm good. Let's go. What about you, Joe? You mentioned Octopath Traveler last week. Is that one of your favorites? Absolutely. Um, And I think that there's like, if I remember, there's like four chapters per character, and each chapter has like, it's it's a uh, theme and variation i think is like the musical term where it's like it's each uh step up is like reminiscent of the prior step but it's so much more intense on tier two versus tier one tier three is just like how could this get any more intense and then tier four there's like an operatic singer going nuts in the background like they really nailed it um not only like melodically but in terms of like just cranking up the intensity as you progress through the game i think it's really effective yeah, my, my personal pick, I think, in, in recent years would have to be God of War. Um, I remember when I played that, now, one of the challenges I have, and I love game music, and I love listening to it at a, at a, 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 a robust volume, um, but I'm typically forced to do it with headphones, living in either apartments or townhouses or something, where there are people nearby that will get upset if you know I turn the volume up as high as I would like to. Sure. So I, I've gone through stupid amounts of headphones to try to get you know the the right settings and the level of convenience and blah 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 and i found god of war worth every bit of pain that i went through to get good headphones working for that game Mm -hmm. um totally worth it yeah so really really uh compatico Uh, really like appropriate music like it's it is like watching a movie like it's perfect it fits perfectly the other thing I like in certain games, and um, I think The Division 2 does that, and I, I really just mention it because it's sort of a top of mind. I do enjoy games where the music changes immediately after a battle. So you get some sense of, okay, this is over now, I can take a breather. And a lot of times a good way to convey that for games is by changing the music back to something more calm. You know, like you've gotten through that battle and you can take a breath and, you know, go on to the next one. Mm-hmm. I enjoy that because you can do a lot with music in a game to tell the story yeah it's very pavlovian right like (laughs) it's sort of conditioning us to like feel relief when they reintroduce that like calm you know exploration soundtrack right Mm -hmm. it works both ways right because then when that calm music starts to you know experiences a bit of an uptick it it'll trigger that that anxious moment of oh man something's going down you know so it's it's uh I agree with uh, Jan. I, I like that as well. Um, I think it's probably one of the best ways to, if done correctly, it's one of the best ways to sort of like let the gamer know, like, all right, this is a moment. Like, you can have a mo- you can have a moment here. You know. Are either of you Zelda fans? I am what you would call a Zelda. Uh, it, one of the greatest shames of my gaming career is that I've never played a Zelda game, but I really want to. <laughs> Does that count? <laughs> Not really, for only because you're not going to understand my question. But how about you, Bill? Uh, no, but I am yelled at by Osif monthly. <laughs> uh, and Osif, for those who don't know, is the the CEO and editor in chief of Shack News, where I work, and he uh, he reminds me uh, frequently. I, I have played some Zelda Breath of the Wild, like maybe three hours. Okay. Um, I just can't enjoy mobile experiences for video games wow well this will fall on deaf ears i suppose (laughs) sorry about your luck joe (laughs) (laughs) all i was gonna say is for a game of the astute of the legend of zelda this for for the series uh you know pedigree and uh for the fandom and the you know accolades they've accumulated over the past 30 years the battle music which is like fairly consistent from game to game i think is like like silly bad it's like it's like dissonant and it's it's always like a, each game has like a riff on this same sort of battle music but it's like fairly consistent game to game and i just don't get it um other than the fact that it does work in the way we just described where it does like trigger like okay it's time to it's time to battle like it's very noticeable but it doesn't sound like anything it's like it's almost not even music but i suppose um Either uh, both of you don't really know what I mean. <laughs> well, see, no. see I, I always want to. I have this. I, I have a Nintendo Switch. It's we talked about it last time. It's in my living room. It's all hooked up, and I have every intention of playing more things on it. And I really wish I w- could pull the trigger on uh, Breath of the Wild, but the damn thing is always eighty dollars still. 
And ooh, you don't uh, own it's it. It's not that it's eighty dollars is too much, but I just I worry that I'm not going to play it enough. And I've made this mistake with the Switch before, where I've had like a weekend. Where I'm like, we're gonna get some Switch games. We're gonna have some fun games to play. And I bought like four of them and played them twice. Huh. Okay. Here's where we're at. Now I know you guys both well enough to say, Jan, you pay that FedEx fee, slow as you want, and I will send you Breath of the Wild. <laughs> okay, we can make that happen. I'm doing it. So this actually goes back to now, okay, now this is a really dumb question, but the Switch takes cartridges of sorts, right? Is it just SD cards or something? There's Yeah, there's like Switch carts, you yeah, mean? Okay. Like a game All cart? Right. Yeah. All the games I've played on it so far were just digital downloads. Yes, yes, there's a cart. I have okay. Game. Well, I will still try to play it. There you go. We've got uh, we've got some resolutions. We should really make these at the beginning of next year or something like that. But <laughs> they should just put it out on PC and I'll play it. I'll pro- and the thing is, if, if I could play it, and I'm just a very picky person. If I can play a game in conditions that I am comfortable, then I you know I'll play it. And it's one of those ones where I would absolutely play it. I would probably love it. I'd probably sink 200 hours into it. And I just don't because I am not a gamer on the couch. That's it. I'm not judging you because, like, that's how I feel about sitting at my desk and playing a game. So it's very much like the opposite of what you're saying. So you you have mm-hmm. my empathy. Um, that being said, for me, like, I decided to bust out my computer when Banner Saga came out, you know, five years ago or something. I was like, I really want to play that. And at the time, such a great game. It was. It was awesome. And uh, that was the only way to play it at the time. So, like, to me, Breath of the Wild is, like, this impactful, like, monumental game release in the history of video games. Like, come on, Bill, you got to play this thing. It's amazing. So let me just ask you real quick, then, for someone like me that's never played a Zelda game before, it's okay to get into that one? Oh, yeah, please. People that say stuff like that are... are... It's a little intimidating. No, that's nonsense. All right. It's like the 19th game in the franchise. (laughs) Yeah. It's like somebody going like Star Wars. That sounds interesting. Can you tell me more? <laughs> well, yeah, they sword fight, but with light. The only thing <laughs> oh, that cool, would happen, though, is that like it would probably kill the series for you. Well, that's fine. I mean, I would be fooling myself if I ever thought I'd go back to the other ones. I, there's just not enough time. Yeah. Well, I mean, retirement hasn't not. hit yet. You don't know that. You don't know. The only way also, that would happen, as with most of the games on my quote-unquote backlog, is if, if everybody stopped making games from now on, and there were no more new games ever, then I could get through all the old ones I have. <laughs> and here's part of the issue that we're always going to have, or I'm always going to have, is that um, there are certain things that I want to be in my gaming life, and Destiny 2 is one. Like, I hate it, I love it, but I'm in it, one way or another. And it's going to take up a certain amount of time, but Finding time for something like Breath of the Wild is going to be very, very difficult because I am always on to the next thing. There's not usually a lull. And it's the same thing for Jan. Like, he has a very difficult time, from my perspective, of being able to sink a lot of hours into more than, like, one game. Like, he can only be married to one game at a time. Um, And he's, you know, in a very tough relationship with destiny but um he would have a difficult time finding the 100 hours i'll say or 50 to 100 hours i don't know i'm guessing um and then being able to get through that over the course of a month or two and not be interrupted by something new and i'm the same way i will make a really good effort though i have three weeks of vacation in june joe if we can make this happen I will play Breath of the Wild in June yeah, during my vacation. Sure. I will literally be home alone during the day with the cat and nothing to do but play Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I'm I'm not I am not blowing smoke up your butt. You you set up <laughs> pay my fee and it and it is a a lender for as long as you want it. Want it. Perfect. All right. Now one thing I wanted to do in closing off the episode here is I wanted to ask you guys what you're looking forward to in the next week. Are there any game releases coming out anything that you want to do? looking forward to i know it's a curveball uh, wasn't in the I script will, i will go first uh for me it's uh it's both for pleasure and for professional uh days gone will be for me um but i assume that there's another big game coming out that a lot of people will be looking forward to when does days gone come out friday next friday so a week from now i want to say um 
I'm pretty sure it's not Thursday. Uh, I'm just trying to keep well, the embargoes and things right. like that in mind. Yeah. So yeah. 26 sounds right. What about you, Joe? Well, as the consummate, I play everything person on the show. I am shocked to announce I don't have an answer for you. I, I have uh, those three games I mentioned earlier, and I planned on sinking more time into those three. Well, that's that's fine. Um, Bill, you, is there another big game coming out this week? Mortal Kombat. Oh, see, that's mm. not my bag of... Yeah, same. No, but I will say from an analytical standpoint, it's bigger than... It's the biggest game coming out. That's true. So that's true. it is going to be a... Uh, yeah, it's going to be a powerhouse. Hmm. I'm just planning, like I said, I'm just going to do my best to play some more Anno 1800 and and not do so much Destiny 2 or the Division 2. I feel like the Division 2 is a bit on a hiatus right now until that raid comes out and we have to hire six friends somehow to play the game with us. Yeah. But, until that happens, hopefully everybody has a good long weekend, or you will have had it by the time you're listening to this episode, or whenever you're listening to it. We hope that you've had a wonderful time, you enjoy listening to us, and we'll tune in again next week. Thank you very much. Bye.